envelope, yeah, and some, I mean, some actors or actresses actually told me that they got rich because of the red envelope. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry we did this in America, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Something terrible happened here. The master Satanist is not an adversary to be taken lightly. She's doing it again. Yeah, it's good to have new faces in this uh, The Conjuring universe. I'm a big fan of it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. We are too. <laughs> <laughs> so you're too, well, because I'm about to ask, was it a big yes, or did you guys hesitate when you're taking this role back at the beginning? <laughs> oh my gosh, a huge yes. No doubts at all, no hesitancy whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, it was- You like, you love horror films like me. Yes, I loved, I mean, I personally, I've been a fan of Conjuring for a very long time, and, I, and I've said this numerous times today, but when I got the audition, I was just so excited that there was a Conjuring 3 coming out. Like I didn't, right. I, I, I was like, I don't care if I'm in this. I'm just happy that there's another one coming. Well, I didn't know the Conjuring films all that well. I mean, I, I thought I'd seen Conjuring 1 when it came out. I'd seen Insidious instead, it seems. But when I read the script, I mean, this is a man who's possessed yeah. um, and he, he kills someone. And like all of these horrible circumstances are kind of, you know, happening to him for right? the soul they're, but they're just they're kind of great as an actor because you get to go to places that you wouldn't you hoped not to go to in your real life so it was a definite yes to do it and did you guys really experience something like if you are really scared or haunted when shooting <laughs> it's so sad it's so sad we keep having to say no to everyone today no we didn't experience anything weird or demonic or out of a normal it was, it was all pretty pretty safe <laughs> oh Ferrari looks really possessed how did you portray that I mean you're probably normal right you're definitely non-possessed <laughs> I wouldn't say it's normal <laughs> yeah, not normal but not possessed yeah I don't believe in any of the paranormal I've never met a ghost I've never hung out with Frankenstein's monster I <laughs> I love horror films though and I think that they're like horror films are grotesque and scary yes but they're so much fun they're thrilling and it's like beyond a roller coaster like when you're ticking up on a roller coaster and you're about to go over the the precipice and plunge down that is scary and you're like what the fuck am I doing on this thing but it's so exhilarating and I thought what's better than watching a horror film than actually being in one and seeing if you can scare yourself but you know the funny thing is like if you are playing someone who's been possessed in the Asian um, crew you get a red envelope with money in it. I don't know if you do have that wow. tradition in there. Wow. Wow. You no, know nothing of this tradition. Did uh, you get oh. a red envelope, Rory? Yeah, and some, I mean, some actors or actresses actually told me that they got rich because of the red envelope. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry we did this in America, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> you should come to Taiwan. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> wow, how interesting, because the society is so superstitious, is it? And yeah. It's like a ceremony of some sort. And wow. you have to bend it right on the day when you shoot that right. one. This is new to you. <laughs> but when I direct the horror film, I'll do that for sure. <laughs> cool. You can't sit up here. <laughs> My God! I'm here to tell our story. There's not one day in my life that goes by that I never think about it. It's always there, it scars you. Did you really talk to Aaron and Debbie in person? Yes, I did. I talked to them quite a bit. Um, I, I developed a, 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 re a really lovely friendship with Debbie and we kept in touch throughout filming and post filming as well. Um, and she actually recently passed about a month ago. Um, and I found out the day the trailer came out was so sad because she was really the most excited person um, 
see for this film to come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel feel very, very heartbroken that she didn't get to see it. I was honestly very excited for them to be able to see everything, to see their story. Right. Um, but to, 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 whoa, excuse me, to the, to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties over here. Can you finally say uh, hi to the fans in Taiwan and tell us the best reason to see it? Uh, hi to the fans of Taiwan. Um, <laughs> fans of Taiwan, the fans of The Conjuring in Taiwan. You gotta go see the film because it's breaking out of the haunted house. It's not like the other films. We've got a haunted prison. We've got um, a haunted morgue. We've got haunted courtrooms. Um, <laughs> everything is haunted and you gotta go see it. Otherwise the ghosts will be gone. <laughs> he was found covered in the victim's blood. The murder weapon belongs to him, and it's got his fingerprints all over yeah, it. Nobody's disputing any of that. Arnie knows that he's going to prison. All we're saying is that there were mitigating circumstances. Mitigating circumstances? Look, I don't think he should get the death sentence either. But I am not going before a grand jury and saying he was possessed by demons. It's never been done. Yes, it has. It's been done twice in England. It's good to see you, Michael. I'm so excited. I mean, I love the previous film we did, which is also part of the universe. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm very curious because this is a real life story. I mean, among all the Warren's cases, why did you choose this topic especially? And this is the first non-house haunted Conjury story. You know, the, the actual case was chosen by James. James is still, although, you know, a producer on this film, right. he is still the Kevin Feige of this universe. He is supervising um, the main Conjuring films and the spin-offs. So ultimately, he's the one who chose this, this film or this story. I think we're, what I was attracted to with this is that it is very different than the other films. It is much more supernatural thriller. We are, as you said, we're blowing the doors off of the haunted house. This is a very different experience for the Warrens. And I think that in itself opens, its, uh, opens it up to a lot of different encounters and experiences. And you know, if you've, se you've seen the film, it's, uh, it's really a thrill ride. But how do you balance the fiction and the truth part? And especially when you need to, you know, put the blood, put the drama and put the fear factors in it. How do you balance it? We did a lot of research on it and there was, we looked back on interviews between, between the Warrens and we interviewed Arnie and Debbie before we, we made the film. It's very tricky. I think that because there was a real victim in this, you know, we're always trying to be both respectful of that and then also tell a Conjuring movie, tell, deliver that thrill ride experience that audiences expect. So it was always a balancing act. And I think that it was really a case by case basis. The, you know, the movie opens with this, this exorcism. We have audio recordings of that, that, you know, we would listen to, share it with the, with the crew and also the actors. I think that was one of the things that would ground us and ground everyone's, everyone's take on it. It's, it's hard to say what, what's real and what's not real because it was such a personal event and an emotional event. We have interviews, we have recordings, but at the end of the day, I always just try to stay true to what was the emotional story behind it. Whatever is going on, whatever happened that day, that was not Arnie. It's a witch's totem. We think your family was cursed. And that connection's still open. Does it change you to have the idea about people saying, devil made me do it? Because sometimes we see the murderer in the court saying that. It's interesting, The you know, that, his claim is so extraordinary. And I think that it's something, especially because we're talking about a real, a real victim and a real murder. You can't take it too lightly. I think that a lot of these movies, you can come in and there is almost like a game you can play with yourself about, do I believe it, do I not believe it? You know, I was raised Catholic. I'm partly a believer. I'm also partly a skeptic. I think, you know, with this, we tried to, to really be thoughtful about how we would present the case and present this claim and try to be 
emo emotionally truthful. I think that was the biggest thing that I would always come back to. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. I wish you big success and looking forward to see more of your horror films. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And say hi to Taiwan. Hi, hello, Taiwan. Go see Conjuring Main <laughs> Devil Made Me Do It. Yay! Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Saving him worth everything you have. Because that's what a Mayfair will cost. All right.